Hello and welcome to our Evening Wisdom broadcast. I'm Reverend Jonatas Bragato and today we have the privilege to have the Reverend Arthur K for us to discuss about the Word of God and to talk more about the things of the Kingdom. Hello brother, how are you doing? <laughs> Very well, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here on the show and for us to have this amazing discussion. It's a pleasure to be here, absolutely. Amen, amen. Really looking forward to this. Tonight we have a very, very special uh, subject that we're going to be discussing, which is the decline of Christianity in Britain. And the question that for us to start, Reverend uh, Arthur, was, is there a decline in Christianity in this country? <laughs> oh, no doubt about it, absolutely. Um, I mean, I was born in 1951 and uh, I think our Queen was a crown, was uh, acceded to the throne in 1953. Mm -hmm. We recently celebrated her Platinum Jubilee, uh, 70 years. And in that 70 years, I think there's been nothing but decline as far as um, the Christian religion is concerned. I mean, for one and a half millennia, this country was founded on Christian principles. King, uh, you know, I, I love, I really admire King Alfred. He was <laughs> a very great king, in my opinion. Uh, yes. You know, and he tried to institute laws that were completely biblically based. Uh, and, uh, but since, uh, well, certainly in the last 70 years, we've seen a terrific decline. Um, I know that um, in my lifetime, I've seen churches decline, the particularly the mainstream churches. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me, uh, very much of the time of um, of Jeremiah. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, Jeremiah lived during the time of good King Josiah, who was probably the greatest king that Judah ever had. I think uh, the Bible indicates he was yes. even greater than, than David. And the reforms that he undertook uh, were amazing. He even united the two kingdoms again, uh, northern Israel and, and Judah. Um, and uh, yet those reforms didn't take because after Josiah, well, came Am uh, Ammon. Uh, for two years he reigned uh, before mm -hmm. he was ousted. And um, sorry, it was uh, it was Manasseh. Manasseh um, that was after we had Hezekiah. Then Manasseh. There were fifty-five years of Manasseh's reign. Yeah, fifty-five solid years. And Manasseh was basically a warlock. Yes, absolutely uh, he, terrible. He, he shed so much innocent blood in Jerusalem, it's probably under his reign that Isaiah was, was martyred. Um, and then came Ammon, his son, uh, uh, for a couple of years. And then uh, Josiah, who did all these tremendous reforms. But those reforms that he undertook didn't take. And in a way, it's a bit like what's happened in this country. You know, we had all this Christian heritage. Yeah. But subsequent to the um, first and then the second world war, just decline, and I think it's because the churches have been in decline. Yeah, um, everything flows from the church, flows from worship. Yeah, uh, worship of the true God, and um, if you worshiping false gods, society will decline. Absolutely, yeah. uh, you know they were in Jeremiah's day worshiping the Queen of Heaven. Um, and uh, although they knew about Yahweh, the true God, they didn't worship him. They, they set their uh, hearts like flint against, uh, against the word of God. So uh, absolutely, there's been a decline in this country. And I think the destruction of a nation starts with the destruction of the family, the destruction of the church, Consequently, that results mm. in the destruction of a nation. Mm. Uh, talking on these three areas today, Arthur, in your lifetime, I think uh, from your age, there's a lot of experience. You have seen so much in the past few years mm. of how this, uh, how the country that we live has decreased in regards to spirituality, in regards to faithfulness to the Word of God, how our country has uh, declined in its values. So when we talk about family, which is the basis of mm -hmm. society, which is the main cell group 
that mm-hmm. compose the body of the church. Mm. Uh, what have you seen in the last years? The decline in families and how is that so against the word of God and how can we come back to the principles of Scripture? Mm-hmm. Well, the devaluation of marriage, uh, you know, it's regarded uh, today as just a piece of paper. Um, People no longer understand what love is. You know, they just say, oh, I've fallen out of love with my spouse. Uh, But love is an act of will. Even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God loved us, although we hated him. And it's an act of will. And when husband promise in them in the wedding ceremony to love their wives that means you know to love them come what may for rich for poor in sickness and in health um it's not uh primarily an emotional thing the emotions uh come and grow but primarily love and first and foremost is an act of will god loved us before the foundation of the world um and and um you know, in due time, he sent Christ to die for the ungodly. So we were completely unlovely, and yet he loved us. Uh, so with respect to marriage, as I say people have, uh, they don't understand what marriage is anymore. They don't value the commitments or the vows that they make. And that has been going on for a very long time. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, the, uh, Another interesting point probably for us to talk is how we've seen the increase of divorce mm. yeah. in the country yeah. and, and, and cohabitation has become the new standard. People living together without being married. Mm-hmm. We had even the prime minister of this country yeah. uh, living yeah. in 10 Downing Street mm. without being married. Mm. So yeah. it's the normalization of these standards, isn't it? Yeah. What does Paul say? Living in chambering and wantlessness. Chambering basically just means bed hopping, going from bed chamber to bed chamber, and that's what people do these days. Uh, you know, it's they believe uh, in evolution that we uh, were not created as human beings in the image of God, but uh, evolved from whatever monkeys or whatever, and so. If that's the case, then why not behave like them? And that's what people are actually doing. And kids don't know who their parents are. They're, they're passed about from pillar to post. Uh, they have no stability in their childhood. It's, uh, it's no wonder that generationally we grow worse and worse. We're just waxing worse and worse from generation to generation. And Christianity is very much a generational religion. You know, God is a God. Um, who deals with us by generations and we're expected to uh, each generation is expected to bring up their children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and yet that's not been done for generations uh, and that's why you know there has been this terrific decline mm-hmm. when we look to the the situation of families today we have the standards that Christ has given mm-hmm. in regards to family these standards they are no longer uphold and i think that sometimes we challenge too much the state and the unbelievers mm. the non-christians for them to uphold these things yeah. when we need to start first primarily with christians yeah. and with the church itself absolutely i think the church is the alpha form of the kingdom it's it's whence the kingdom of God comes and grows. It can go right back to the Garden of Eden. And how did uh, God begin? He um, created man from the dust of the earth, and then he put him into a, a garden. He planted a garden specifically as a sort of custom-built environment for man. And in the midst of that garden, there were two trees, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. That place was a sanctuary. It was where God met with Adam and um, it was it was the place of worship and that garden was uh, uh, in the land of Eden and um, through it flowed a river it came from a, a mountain top obviously and uh, the garden the river flowed through the garden symbolizing the, the Holy Spirit right from the beginning of the Bible water symbolizes the Holy Spirit 
think you know in in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth the earth was without form and void darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters and um the water gave life to the garden but from that garden then from the garden the river split into four watering the four corners of the earth and that symbolizes the holy spirit going out to the four corners mm-hmm. of the earth that's what adam should have done he should have carried the worship of cult, the culture of worship out into the world in fact we know the word cult cult has to do with worship mm-hmm. and every culture agriculture and all the all the things we call culture should flow from worship that's where we begin um god it was not good for, for the man that he should be alone and god made a helper suitable for him and what eve eve's first responsibility was to help adam in the worship of god and as god worshippers then they could go out into the world and, mm-hmm. and uh, bring it all in subjection to mm-hmm. him and jesus you know builds his church uh and his church is meant to be the salt and the light of the world and if the church if the salt has lost its saltness how can anything be savored if the church is not being church there is no hope for the world Mm -hmm. absolutely not Uh, and it's because the decline began in the church that the decline has continued throughout all of society and that's you know when things go wrong they go wrong first in the church and then out into the world and because those ministers and bishops of the church of england the national church didn't uphold the bible our queen didn't uphold the bible our government didn't uphold the bible and now we are where we are um destined for the kind of judgment that jeremiah saw fall upon um, judah and jerusalem and the only way for us to see any change on this is by repentance Amen. it's by being yeah. uh an outpouring of the holy spirit and the mm. work of god and people's hearts yeah. bringing them uh into repentance mm. a lot of our viewers might be thinking why how did we get into this mess how <laughs> you know how did this started and false doctrine will lead to every sort of evilness mm. we have seen this how false doctrine can lead uh, a family can lead a denomination a church it can lead a country into destruction Mm. and and one of the things that you'll find all throughout scripture speaking on the importance of persevering in the faith upholding the standards Mm. upholding the foundational truths of scripture Mm. and if you could share with us that passage on psalms that speak about uh the foundations mm-hmm. this is something really vital really important for us a lot of people they don't understand how did how did this whole thing start and historically speaking of course just making a very uh small analysis of this the whole liberal movement or modernistic movement at a, as it used to be called uh which is a, a movement inside the church that doesn't believe in the authority of scripture that doesn't believe that the bible is the inspired word of god and this is the standard that god Mm. has given for mankind to live Mm. so they don't believe that this is a book of revelation that from cover to cover uh, is the revelation of god isn't it you only need to think about the ten commandments the, the, the decalogue you know how do they begin Mm-hmm. you shall have no other gods before me the, the, the first five commandments have to do with our relationship to god and to the, the authority figures that he has put in yeah. charge um and then the last five have to do with our relationship to our neighbor yeah corresponding to as jesus said the first and greatest commandment is you should love the lord your god with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and uh, the second is like unto it you should love your neighbor as yourself um and it's, it's because the first part of the decalogue has been ignored because as you say people have followed false doctrine yeah um, the first commandment you shall have no no other god before me literally means in my face you shall have no other god in my face and that is what people of the church has done it's brought false gods into the church in right in god's face and um 
you shall not make unto yourself any grave enemies, the second one. You shall not bow down yourself to them nor yes. serve them. And that there's where the false doctrine comes in. You know, Israel thought they could worship Yahweh, still worship Yahweh, but through a, a golden calf. And the church thinks it can pay God lip service, still so-called worship God. Dead rituals it. and all sorts of things yeah, yeah. Uh, that we have And these are the kind of foundations. Placed. I mean, the, the, you, yeah. you talked about Psalm 11 says, verse 3, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? You know, if, if, if the world has been turned upside down, if... if our very lawmakers are framing mischief by the laws they make. Um, what can we do? It's just we've got to be thankful that God is still on his throne, that Jesus is still yes. king. Yes, amen. Um, amen. When we look to, to history itself, uh, I know there might be some people watching and they, they're trying to understand uh, where this all began, what is the root of all this. And we're showing here the the foundations where everything starts it starts by understanding that there is one but true living god and he has revealed himself to his creation yeah. we have seen this through nature god's revelation he has revealed himself in the heavens declare the the works of the lord everything that we see out in nature reveals uh, the glory the majesty the power of god but he has revealed himself directly through his words and he has also revealed himself personally when mm -hmm. God became a human being through the miracle of incarnation. The word. <laughs> the word of God, the word yeah. that was made flesh mm. and, and dwelt among us. So God has revealed himself to us. We look to the, to the word of God, to scripture. This is God's revelation to mankind. We look to the life and ministry, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is God's revelation to mankind. This whole planet, nature, everything that exists, it's God's revelation to mankind. Mm. And we have deliberately rejected this. And primarily, I would say the church has uh, rejected this. The church has abandoned uh, this understanding mm. because we, we, I would say us, but the people who rejected such truth, they are worshiping a false god. Mm. And uh, when we look to... And, and, and that they become like the gods they worship. Exactly. Psalm, Psalm 115 teaches that. And it's a false Jesus. When we talk about worshiping Jesus, if you talk to them, the, the kind of Jesus that you would hear, that you would listen, mm. is not the true Jesus of the Bible. No. No. It's not the Jesus that overthrown the money changers in the temple. It's not the Jesus that in John chapter 8, verse 44, he told to the Jews that believed in him, mm. you are not sons of Abra Abraham, it, you are sons of the devil. It was Jesus. It was the pre-incarnate Lord Jesus Christ who destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, he, there was... What does it say in Genesis 18? Uh, Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three. He was uh, sitting under the oaks of Mamre, and behold, three men. And uh, these three men, it was, it was Jesus and two angels. And uh, you know, Jesus came to speak with Abraham, and it, he revealed to him about what he was going to do to Sodom and Gomorrah. And um, you know, people think that Jesus is just some meek and mild. Uh, it's some sort of guru. That's the uh, yes, that's the yes. image that people created. That yeah. Jesus, or, mm. or we totally deny this man, mm. and we reject him completely, mm. or we see him as some sort of guru. Well, He's, God, God has spoken, and it, as Paul says in Hebrews, in these last days, He's spoken to us by His Son. Yeah. Um, Jesus is the Word of God. God is a God who speaks. I mean, from eternity, before ever creation existed, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were communicating, were enjoying each other's fellowship, were delighting to serve and honor each other. Um, God wasn't eternally in, in some uh, silence. Um, he was, uh, there was conversation going on, and, and God created man to involve him in that relationship with the triune God. Jesus said, um, you know, if any man uh, believes in me, my father will uh, come into him and I will come and we will dwell with him. And um, so, you know, we're, we've become, through Christ, part of this amazing family, this family that, that speaks and that talks. And when people don't serve the true God, 
I basically lose the power of speech. I certainly lose the power of true speech. Um, language, that's another thing you see, part of this decline. Language has changed. The meaning of words has changed. In fact, I was uh, not surprised, although in some sense shocked a, a few, well, must be well over a decade ago now, when young kids started to use the word wicked to mean good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Isaiah talks about people yeah. who call evil good and good evil. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is what's happened to society. We've, we have, when a culture, when a people changes its religion, changes the God that it worships, then its language changes. And that's what happened at the Tower of Babel. You know, exactly. They, they no longer worship the one true God and their language is divided. You know? um, so you know, all of these things are just symptoms of the decline of um, the church, really, in, in this nation. When we look to, uh, to history itself, back at the, by the end of the uh, 18th century, you get the rise, uh, particularly in Germany, uh, rationalism, liberal, yeah, yeah. And, and which is the foundation for liberalism mm -hmm. that uh, has been exported and also developed, was already being developed. Mm -hmm. uh, that starts with the denial first of the Trinity, yeah. Unitarianism. And is, a, a criticism of the text of the Bible. Yeah, of course. Textual criticism. It's, the, <laughs> it's, it's, it's basically removing the authority, the supremacy yeah. and authority of Scripture yeah. and analyzing Scripture itself in dealing with the book mm. as it is just another piece of literature. Mm. And I believe that's a foundational uh, thing in related to understanding God's will for us. It is foundational to understand that you're not dealing with just a simple book. Mm -hmm. You are dealing with God's revelation to mankind. And if you don't have such belief before you open this book. If a man comes to God, he must believe that he is. Exactly. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. If you don't submit to the Bible, if you don't submit to the word of God, you have no hope. You know, this is faith is submission to Jesus, submission to God. Amen. And um, until people learn to repent of their sins, to turn away from their past lives and to commit themselves to bend the knee to Jesus Christ, because he is king. Um, you know, what does Peter say? Him whom you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, um, God has made him Lord, you know, he's, uh, he's exalted him, and Jesus is king, and we've got to bow to him, uh, and unless we do, there's no hope of salvation. It's like Psalm 2, isn't it? You've got to kiss the son, lest he be angry in you, you perish from the way. <laughs> um, God has made him king. Uh, why do the heathen rage? The peoples imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. That's Jesus saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Jesus is king in his church. You know. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them in thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Amen. Uh, Amen. Praise God. Look, we're, we're going to have now, I, want, I have a special message to share with you. Uh, we're going to just listen to this message now, and we'll be back in a minute to continue our discussion. Dear people of God, I pray you are being blessed through this broadcast, Evening Wisdom. And I want to share with you the project, the vision that we have for the whole of Teesside and the Northeast. God has called us to plant a church in what is today considered the fifth most deprived estate in the country. 
Word in Spirit Church started on Easter Sunday 2021. We are fighting the good fight of faith and overcoming the battles and God has given us victory in that place. And you have the opportunity of being a blessing and being a part of what God is doing by supporting financially our work. We are currently in the fifth most deprived state in the country. You know that before I started my ministry work in Thorntree, there was no Protestant evangelical churches there since 2004. God has placed us there for a purpose and we have a heart to reach our community, to reach this country, fulfilling the great commission of Jesus Christ, preaching the gospel and making disciples. And I believe that you can be an instrument from God. You can be a channel from God to be a blessing to us. If you want to partner with us financially, please go in the description of this video and consider making a donation through our stewardship account. If you decide to be a monthly partner, be assured that everything that is donated there is going through the cause of the gospel and the missionary work that we are doing in this place. If you can't support us financially at the moment, please become our prayer partner. Pray for us, intercede for what God is doing in this place. I am so grateful for your support and I hope you continue to be blessed through this program. God bless you in Jesus name. Praise the Lord. We are so thankful for all of our partners in the ministry, all those who have enabled us to continue doing the work of the Lord here in Teesside. Word and Spirit Church is a church that God has called us to proclaim Christ faithfully in this region to win souls and make disciples. So I'm so glad for you who are part of this ministry and those who have been involved helping us to continue doing the work of the Lord in this place. We're back here uh, with Reverend Arthur K. And it's such a blessing, brother, for us to be here discussing on this subject. I would like to bring an attention. There's a particular verse here in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 8 that speaks a lot to me. This passage uh, we see when the people of, of God, the people of Israel, they're about to enter into the land. Before they got at the land, God is dealing with them. God is preparing them for this great entrance. And then God is going to warn them of the dangers that they were going to face. And one of the biggest dangers that the people of Israel had in front of them was forgetting the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. We are in a culture today that forgetting things is something normal. Oh, I just forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot about this. I forgot about mm -hmm. that. When we talk about trivial things, of course, there are things that doesn't matter much. Uh, but everything that we forget about brings some sort of consequence. It brings lack. It brings. It creates a necessity. When we look to this passage, God is going to show them the danger of forgetting mm. God, the one who is who brought them out of Egypt mm. and has brought them into. Uh, a prosperous in a land of milk and honey. Mm. Uh, I was once talking to uh, a secular person, a person who claimed I hadn't had no religion. Uh, I'm not religious. That's that's the argument that you hear a lot, isn't mm. it? And I remember this person talking about how Christianity has damaged the world and how it's provoked so many wars and so many things. And and let, let's think for a moment. What would this country be? What was this country? All the barbarians that lived mm. here mm. before Christianity mm. came into this country. Mm. Uh, there was no notion of family. Mm. There mm. was no understanding whatsoever of continuity and raising kids in the proper way and descendancy mm. and all of that. This is something that the church has developed, mm -hmm. the whole understanding of private property, for an example. Mm. This is something that comes from the scriptures itself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, even the Ten Commandments speaks openly, thou shalt not covet 
yeah. your neighbor's house. Yeah. Thou shalt not covet nothing that belongs to him. Yeah. These are all things that were embedded into our society. Many of these things we still mm. enjoy from it because yeah. there are benefits from it. Mm -hmm. We yeah, enjoy you, you, of some of the blessings, the prosperity. You shall not steal. You yeah. shall not steal. That's the basis of private property. Because, it is. Because God's word, God puts his word behind your name. You know, you write your name on your, your property and, and God says to other people, you shall not steal. And exactly. And he says it to you. Like, and we keep, still see keep that your today. hands out of other people's pockets. We still see that today, even mm. though our society has forgot God. Mm. But we still keep many things mm. that we understand there are benefits blessings. to us. Yeah. That there, these are blessings, but the consequences of forgetting God Himself, yeah. they are disastrous. You see, when we look to this passage in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11, it says, Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping His commandments, His judgments, and His statutes, which I command you today. Hmm. Lest when you have eaten in our full, and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the houses of bondage. That's a reminder right there of the Decalogue. That's how it begins. Exactly. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the house of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, yeah, out of the land of Egypt. Led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery <clears throat> serpents and scorpions in the thirsty land where there was no water, who brought water to you out of the Fintley walk, rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know that he might humble you and that he might test you to do you good in the end. Mm. Then you say in your heart, my power and my might in the might of my hand have gained me all this wealth. Verse 18 says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for is he is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers this day. As it is this day yeah. Then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God, and follow other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, that you shall surely perish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's I mean, an amazing passage. Absolutely. You have to remember. And remember doesn't just mean make a mental note of it. I mean, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, the fourth word of the Decalogue. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That doesn't just mean, oh, I must make a mental note. It means memorialize that day. Keep that day. Keep coming to worship God. Leviticus 23 um, talks about the seven feasts that God gave to yeah. um, to Israel and the first one that's listed is the Sabbath he said you've got to convene you've got to gather together every week every Sabbath day for worship to, for worship and the day is changed uh, but it doesn't but the command still to worship God to come to worship the Lord Jesus Christ every week has not changed yes you know, we still must come to worship him we have to remember to do that we memorialize it and i mean the very center of the church's worship is the memorial supper you know uh, in which we uh, make memorial of the death yes. of christ uh it's it's uh something we've got to do and unless we practice it then we forget and people that's one of the marks of the decline people was people forgetting the lord we had day. our government recently was Two years ago or something, or a year ago, no, two years ago, before pre-pandemic, yeah. uh, they were all discussing about to mm. make Sunday just another day. So mm. basically, mm. Uh, people already work uh, six days a yeah. week, and then yeah. let's turn people all into more slaves 
and just work seven days a week. You yeah. have no time for your family. You mm. have no time for God. You have mm. no time for anything what, that is Im important. Yeah, what, what's important about the fourth commandment is, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, and it, you shall do no manner of work. You nor your servant, are, you know, yeah. it, it's about the people you control, mm -hmm. you are responsible for. You've got to give them rest. God has given you rest by bringing you out of the house of bondage. So now you've got to give everybody you're responsible for that rest, uh, uh, rest in him. And when governments um, <clears throat> and uh, employers all ignore this and make, their, make people work on the Lord's day, that is a forgetting of these things. And it's why uh, we turn away from worshipping the true God and we become slaves to false gods. He who commits sin is a slave of sin, said our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and uh, that's why there's people never seem so busy they, uh, and yet they, they never get true rest. You know, they, yeah. do, they go to relax, they go on their holidays, but they never know what true rest is. It's distraction, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's, that's one right. of the the differences. Yeah. That you Jesus, can go. Jesus said, "Come unto me, you uh, you that are weary, and I will give rest unto your souls." That's Which is satisfaction, yes. something that the world can give you. Yeah. The world can give you entertainment. Mm -hmm. can keep your mind busy for two hours you're watching a series of yeah, film yeah. it can keep your mind busy but rest for the soul that meaning of purpose of life mm -hmm. that satisfaction of the soul yeah. that you know you were born into this world you're not a mistake yeah. you are not your parents mistake God has brought you here for a purpose he wants to glorify himself through your life mm -hmm. he wants to be exalted by you living the life that he planned for you yeah. before the foundation of the world by you being a blessing not just for you and for your own but for those mm. around you mm. that through that you are able to honor the lord your god when mm. we look to this passage i see very clearly that when the people of god or the old covenant the people of israel how they re when they rejected the lord your god when they rejected his commandments mm. when they became Comfortable. Uh, comfortable. You mm. see that he even describes the time that yeah. you're most tempted to forget yeah. the Lord your God. When mm. you have built in houses, when you have eaten and you are full. Mm. Uh, I was doing a, a, a story, uh, a history research, and there's a, an interesting account uh, on the New England colonies. Uh, back in the 17th century, the greatest book that was sold in the colonies uh, was the age of doom, the day of doom. It was talking about the urgency, the return of Christ and everything mm -hmm. on that. <laughs> and then uh, when you got to the, the 18th century and how the colonies were prospering and people were making so much money and then the best-selling book of that whole century was uh, the, a book on how to get wealth, mm -hmm. how to grow in wealth. Yeah. So the focus of society is no longer uh, understand the precepts of God and to understand God's word, but has shifted. Mm -hmm. And then you see a great decline in society. Of course, we see God's intervention through the first great awakening. Mm -hmm. You have a great revival that happened. God uses uh, <clears throat> great <throat> a man of God who were used by God, like George Whitfield, John Wesley, and many others, mm. they were used by God to advance such revival. But you have mm. a great period of a, a great spiritual depression. Mm. You, you had that in England as well after 1662 mm. and a great Preach, decline yeah. of preaching. Mm. The greatest preachers that the country had, they were expelled yes. from the, the established church, mm. the great ejection. It's a history fact uh, that uh, hundreds of amazing good ministers mm. who consciously could not submit to something that they understood to be unbiblical, mm. they were just pulled out of the church. And the destruction that that has brought was immense. Mm. It was only changed by the revival that happened mm -hmm. in the midst of the 18th century. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, since the Victorian to... era, what we see is a great decline mm. in this country. So many it? warnings that God has given to us. So many warnings. Uh, just like the warnings that, I mean, 
Judah was supposed to have been warned by northern Israel being carried away into captivity, but they didn't heed the warning. And we have not heeded all the warnings that God has given to us, the Second World War and all the wars ever since. And um, Jesus, Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. Remember, it's that word again. Yeah. You know, you've got to remember the warnings that God gives, as well as you know, you've got to remember his blessings and his commands uh, and uh, don't get too comfortable so that you forget God but equally you've got to remember the warnings as well and take heed to them, do something about them You see that in this passage here he gives a guarantee saying that I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish if you go after the false dog, gods if you forget the Lord your God. This is what is going to happen to you. And verse 20 said, As the nations which the Lord destroys before you, so you shall perish because you would not be obedient mm. to the voice of the Lord your God. Mm. Mm. And Christ has given us his revelation. He has given us his word. He has given us his command he has given us his spirit he has given us his grace and i think that it needs to start with us as the church of god as the church of christ we need to acknowledge that we have a responsibility to be salt and light today mm. uh we know that the world uh well, how do we show our allegiance you know isn't this we come we show our allegiance to Jesus by coming faithfully to worship him. That should be our priority. You know, on the Lord's Day, we shouldn't be taking our kids to other kids' birthday parties or because it's a nice day going to the seaside. Mm -hmm. Jesus commands us to come and worship him. And he, he, he requires us to give to him too. You know, we pay enormous taxes to the government. Yes. Uh, and yet, God, and, you, and you're obliged to. You have no uh, options. That's right. <laughs> if you don't, you you will be penalized. You, yeah. if you ignore the warnings, <laughs> mm. yeah. yeah, that's right. You pay a lot more than ten percent to this government. In, oh yes, in taxes, uh, indirect taxes as well as direct ones. You know, whenever, whatever you buy, you got VAT on it. Um, and yet, people don't find it hard to bring ten percent of their increase to the Lord Jesus Christ. And when God says, remember me, remember my commands, that's one thing he requires of us, to give of back to him of the increase that he has given to us. It starts with us looking every aspect of our lives. Yeah, yeah. And how we honor honoring God in our marriages, how we honoring God through our finances, mm -hmm. how we honor God through our spiritual lives, our life mm -hmm. of devotional, our ministerial lives. Every Christian we believe has a vocation, yeah. has something to fulfill in the kingdom of God mm -hmm. in this world. And how do we exercise our vocation? How do we serve God's kingdom with our gifts, with our abilities? All of these things are part on honoring the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I see that the change that is going to come is going to come by the church mm -hmm. doing its part mm -hmm. and for us taking our position as the people from the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. as the citizens of this kingdom mm -hmm. understanding that what the apostle paul would say that we are ambassadors mm -hmm. of god so we are in a foreign nation sometimes we'll say oh but yeah. this country this country but we don't belong to this country we don't belong to this world we are parts we are citizens of oh, the kingdom of heaven yeah. if we want to see change have, on we, this geography we oh, have a city without foundations whose builder and maker is god yeah definitely yeah and 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 it speaks about the new jerusalem that that that's the mother of us all yeah that that is the the place where we that that we hope for that mm. we expect the the eternal life the eternal kingdom of god that we can all agree on this mm. how god has before the foundation of the world he has called his people he has given us an assignment a purpose mm. when we look to john uh the end of the book of john mm. uh when jesus is risen he comes to the disciples and he said peace be with you as the father sent me i am so, sending you yeah. so the mission that the father has given to me 
which aspect of this mission we were talking i was preaching on this uh, a couple of sundays on pentecost mm. sunday of course the mission of dying on the cross that's the mission that only jesus could fulfill mm. but the mission of going into all the world and discipling the nations mm. and to teach them obedience to he the calls, commands of Christ. Yeah, he calls us to follow him. So we got to take up our cross too. That's our cross. Yeah. That's that's our sacrifice. Yeah. That's what is God has called us to do as the church of Christ. And I think it needs to start with repentance first mm. in the church. Mm. And I think we need to be prepared to pay a price for yep. the word of God. We are going to be persecuted for this. Mm. The world hates the truth. They hate uh, the doctrine of Christ, the teaching of Christ. Mm -hmm. they, that's why they created a false Jesus. Yeah. And they acknowledge this false Jesus, this guru, that they recognize that this Jesus, uh, the guru Christ, is the one that can bring help for your anxiety he can bring you good teachings of good morals that's what this uh world acknowledges but the saving jesus that requires people to repent and come to him and bow knee to him and recognize him as lord as savior this is not the jesus that no. we the, no. this world is interested on worshiping at all but the church needs to acknowledge that there is a false god out there mm. and there is a false god in most of our churches today being well, preached wor worship is inescapable god created us to be worshiping beings and we will worship something someone whatever we worship you know people who don't go to church on sundays they're still worshiping a god yeah <laughs> and it's they're worshiping about, themselves yeah. they're worshiping whatever Th yeah. that's how uh, people don't understand but when we talk about worship it's always about giving something mm. and that's why the lord serving commands something. Yeah. serving something and giving something that's mm. why you see cain and abel and right at the very beginning of scripture mm. god commands them to bring an offering mm. to bring him worship mm. uh, abel brings the first fruit he brings the best of his crop of his flock of his flock and yeah. and the other brings the rest yeah. of his crop and what is the end result of it we see mm. There is a horrible murderer because there is a reward for worship. Yeah. Well, Cain tries to come without blood. You know, he, he comes first. He doesn't confess that there first, must first be a sacrifice, a substitute. So Abel should have been the one who came first with the offering. And then uh, we can offer the works of our hands on the basis of what Jesus has done for us already. Uh, and that's why... That all is a prefigured it pointed out to yes, to yeah, to the sacrifice yeah. of christ and what we see today for us as christians for god's people the saints of god we need to wake up mm. i see that the true christians those who still believe that this book is god's yeah. word yeah those who still acknowledge the lordship of christ that acknowledge him as king as savior as the only way to god not mm. one of the many ways yeah. Yeah. not a way of a good there life there is none other name given under heaven amongst men no where other name must be saved. Yeah. for we who do acknowledge this it needs to start with us we must remember the lord our god and reject the false god starting mm. by the false god that being taught that's being pushed unfortunately and in many institutionalized churches there are many church buildings that you will go today unfortunately we can say that the majority of what we have today unfortunately mm -hmm. you would go in and you won't find the true and living christ being preached there being taught there mm -hmm. that's right unfortunately yeah. you will find from the most horrible type of heresy to the most sort of soft comfortable christianity or rigid mm. and dead religion mm. that's what we have found today and mm. i think that we need to repent as the people of god mm. we need to examine ourselves as the command when we come to the lord's supper examine yourselves we need to examine ourselves and see that god has given us everything the Bible says that his divine power has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Everything that we need 
to do the will of God and to live a blessed life and to live a holy life mm-hmm. and to glorify Him, He has given us. Yeah. So we're trying to pray and, and ask and, and, and trying to receive so many things and ask for things that He has given us already. Everything pertaining to life and godliness, He has given us. His divine power has granted to us. So it's time for us to take hold of this and say, God has called us to walk in this evil age as the salt and light. Yeah. So we must pay the price of being salt and light and if necessary. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we are, as you were indicating, we're sort of resident aliens. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, we are exiles. Uh, Extraterrestrial beings. Cu- in this culture. And, and, and Psalm 137 is about being an exile. You know? And it asks an in, a very important question. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Yeah. And the subsequent Psalms give answers to that. You know? The reason is, I mean, God put his name in Jerusalem uh, on the temple. His name was there. But Psalm 138 says, you have magnified your word above all your above your name you know we've still got god's word even though the temple's destroyed and psalm 139 says even if i make my bed in hell you are there (laughs) so god is with us the transcendence Uh, of god and jesus said i will be with you always even until the end of the age you know and um so we mustn't be downhearted jesus is still king although we're exiles we are exiles with a mission uh, you know, we are to be salt and light. Amen. We're coming uh, to the end of this broadcast, and it's been such a, a blessed and a lovely time to be able to share the Word of God. I would say, and I would encourage our viewers, just look around you. Just look around what's happening to our society, what's happening to this world. Mm how the families are being destroyed, how the communities are being destroyed, how the governments are being destroyed, how everything is falling apart. God has sworn, He said this to Israel, He says this to every nation, to every people, to every person, to every family that denies Him. It then shall be if your fathers, if you by any means forget the Lord your God, and follow other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. Just look around you. Look around us. What you will see in this society is that the world is crumbling down. The world is falling apart because we have rejected the word of God. We have rejected his principles, we are doing everything that we can to remove God away from our society. But no human being stays alive without worshiping something. If we don't worship the true God, we will worship the government. We will worship the lies of our culture. We will worship Satan and his influence governing the mind of the unbelievers. That's what we see today. And what is the saving power of Christ? If you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, repented of your sins by the power of His Spirit, you can have assurance of everlasting life. You can have assurance of your sins being forgiven. You can have assurance that if you die now, tomorrow, anytime, you will be with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle St. John, he said, I have written you these things that you may know that you have eternal life. So how can we have assurance of eternal life? The same uh, text says that by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, believing that He is the true God, that He is the Son of God, that He died for us on that cross, but He rose again on the third day for our justification, for our salvation. There is redemption in His name. There is salvation in his name. I want to uh, pass to Reverend Arthur for us to, for you to share with us a final message as we come to uh, the end of our broadcast. Well, I think, um, yeah, we can, you've called on people to come to our Lord Jesus Christ. He is indeed the only Savior. Um, before he was born, I think the uh, 
The angel said to Joseph, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And that's not in their sins, it's from their sins. And, uh, you know, we've got to give up our sin and bend the knee to our Lord Jesus Christ. He is king and um, he is in, in control. Um, we not to put our trust in uh, these false gods, in governments that offer us uh, salvation and are manifest liars, <laughs> yep. but uh, to put our trust not in princes, but in, in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, brother. Okay. Such a lovely time together. I hope you've been blessed this evening. This is our Evening Wisdom broadcast, sharing to you the wisdom of God so that you may know the truth and that you may be set free by the truth of Christ. I pray that the Lord bless you and keep you, make His face shine upon you, grant you His peace, and that His blessing, the bless of the only true God, Father Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you today and forever. Amen. Amen. Good night, and I'll see you in our next Evening Wisdom broadcast. God bless you.